Broadcasting to the world from South Jersey, this is Anything Goes with Phil Rossi and J.J. Golick. A weekly podcast with different topics every week. The views and opinions on this show are entirely those of the hosts, guests, and callers. And do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of any businesses or organizations mentioned during the show. And now, it's Anything Goes with Phil Rossi and J.J. Golick. Yo, yo, what is going on? This is Anything Goes. My name is Phil Rossi alongside my man, J.J. Golick. Go like JJ, what is going on? Very, very excited for today's show, Phil. Yes, JJ, me too. So we are getting ready for NHL hockey 2021 season, but more importantly, the Philadelphia Flyers. Oh yeah, my team. 2021 season. So before we get into anything else, we got to welcome in our special guest. He is the Philadelphia Flyers PA announcer, public address announcer. He is a Philly legend. It is our friend Lou Nolden. Hey Lou, how are you? I'm pretty good. How's it going there, Phil? Good. Hey, Jay. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's, it's we really appreciate your time. We understand you're, you're gearing up now, Lou. Are you just are you in your house, just in your office by yourself, just going over all these crazy hockey names? How are you preparing? <laughs> I haven't gone over a single name so far. Oh wow! Before, so you're uh, so you're ready? Happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I I can't say I never went over a single one. I uh, I looked at some of ours uh, that I didn't know because we're going to be scrimmaging and uh, on the tenth of all Flyers people at the center. So um, I'll need to make sure that I have that right. And uh, the only guy that I really was too concerned about was uh, Zed, our uh, our draft choice, who will play. I think his last name is Winston, right? Zed Winston? I think so. Yeah, and I believe that's how you say it. But uh, I don't know when I'll be able to find out exactly from him But because uh, I won't see players. They're pretty much uh, sequestered. Now, usually, is that, is, that who, is that who you go to for the name? Is the player directly? Uh, no, actually, we have a, uh, um, a group of announcers that uh, always talk, and, and all of us uh, have placed our roster in full, on pronunciation-wise, on a website, which I can go to for any, anybody. So um, I can go in there and, uh, and check any team out. Uh, directly from the announcers themselves. Uh, it works out pretty good. And also, the NHL publishes a uh, phonetical uh, pony, so to speak, you know, for us, uh, for guys that uh, we don't know. And if they're not on there, I used to just go down and talk to them or uh, talk to the PR people and get them down downstairs. But for all, this season, at least to start out with, I'm going to be upstairs instead of downstairs here. PA guys aren't allowed in the penalty box. Really? That's pro COVID-19 protocol. Ah, so are they going to be doing the home ice experience again? I know a lot of people enjoyed having you in their home, so to speak. Uh, I don't really know. I don't really know. Since all the games are on, uh, on TV, I don't know what they plan to do with that. Uh, I've not been told uh, to be there for every game, so uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, I, you know, everything is, is, is dynamic. Everything is constantly moving and it's going to stay that way all year. So, uh, we have to r- roll with the punches, so to speak, kind of like radio, like you guys. Yeah, exactly. Now, Lou, the question I have for you, cause I do have some experience. I do, I do do, um, public address announcing for the Lakewood Blue Claws. And, okay. and I know for, at least for me, when I did the audition and, and we practice sometimes speaking to an empty crowd. For me, it was a little bit difficult because I like to work off the energy of the people and the noise. Um, so for you, doing this PA announcing this year with no fans, at least to start, are you worried about that at all? No, nope. not okay. the least. I, uh, I, uh, you know, I'll still be the same. I'll still have the Pico power play going. I'll still have uh, the goals going with the energy that I use. I'll try not to be a cheerleader. Uh, I never do that. I can help it, but... Uh, Except for that Pico, that's yeah, exactly. sort of grown from a uh, from a just a, saying it to a, its own life. Yeah, that's Actually, true. I have a little button here that was issued uh, by the team and Pico. And hold on. And the Flyers are going on the Pico power play. So you heard that? That's a little button. It's like the uh, one from. Uh, uh, staples, you know, like that was easy. Oh yeah, <laughs> and and there were a couple thousand of those made, uh, and uh, they're pretty rare. So. 
You know, it was cool. Even just sure. here, even just hearing you just press that button, it was really hard for me. And I kind of saw JJ's mouth moving too. Like we were actually going to say it with you. <laughs> it's a well, natural reaction, I think, in the stadium. You know, when you're in that Wells Fargo Center and you hear the referee announce a, an opposing penalty, you know the next thing you're going to hear is Lou pop on and say that. And the energy, just everyone's united especially when it's against the Penguins or one of our big, big rivals. The energy is just there. Well, Phil, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I can't hear the fans very much because of where I was sitting. Uh, you know, we have glass all around us. Right. So you don't hear a lot of the things that happen. But I, I, I've heard before that, uh, you know, everybody does it along with me, or a lot of people do. And yeah. that's good. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, now, do you have people outside when you're not doing the game, when they see you, are they always asking you to say it? Uh, not always, but there are some people that ask me. And uh, normally I don't because I, I save it for games. Right, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I may do it to record it if I want to show like your show. But, uh, you know, I, we'll use the button instead of uh, just blurting it out. But, um, you know, hey, it's... It's not what I'm there for. I'm there to inform the fans about what's going on, just like you when you're when you're doing baseball, you know. Exactly, exactly. Now, so that so that's another question I have for you is, every time I've been at a game, I've never heard you mess up. Now, I pray to God that you continue to do this, is to do such a great job. But have you ever made a mistake or made a big gaffe uh, while doing PA announcing? Sure, sure. Uh, I once called a penalty. I was working at a bank. And I once called a penalty at thirteen dollars and eight cents instead of thirteen minutes and eight seconds. Okay. You know, uh, and I once uh, also turned to the guy next to me and made a comment about a uh, a girl that was in the first row, and it went across every across the building. Oh. Uh, it was like, hey, look at that blonde in the first row. <laughs> and I I didn't know my mic was on, and then there was a. A phone call. I picked, picked up the phone call, and it was Joe Cadillac, my good friend. And he said, "To the right or the left?" <laughs> said, oh shit! Pardon me. Darn. How about that? Well. Yeah. Oh man, that's that's a great one, Lou. I uh... stuff happens. Oh, hot mics are dangerous, aren't they? Yep. Now in that but situation, that, no real gas, but I can be. Yeah, like I, I know, you know, for for us in radio, if if we make a mistake or you stumble, they just tell you just keep going, right? Like if you you know stop and try to apologize and you start umming and on, that's the worst thing to do because you actually bring more attention. In the PA announcing, it's a little bit different, as we know, because you're not just actually. I think it's probably worse as the PA announcer, right? Because you have thirty five thousand, forty thousand captive audience <laughs> right in front of you. It's a little hard to ignore it or not not hear it. Well, a lot of people tell you about it when, when you know, if, if you mess something up or if you forget something, they all, every, a lot of people will tell me. Well, I know, Lou, you know, just from coming to the games and, you know, listening, that there's a lot of times where there's errors that are announced, but it's not your fault. It's what they've given you, and then you have to come back and, you know, make a correction at the end of the period or whenever they give it to you. And it's yeah, not even... It's, you're right, J.J. Sometimes it's very, very difficult Um uh, for the guys upstairs to pinpoint, you know, a, a deflection or something, uh, or, or something that occurs on a goal, and um, they they do a great job at it. It was off ice officials, but every once in a while, there's something that they can't see because they're blocked, and they'll, they can look at replays and all. But you know, how long can you wait to put the goal out? You know, and you're usually so very quick, ball. very quick. I mean, it's. I've timed it, and it, it's so quick. By the time they drop the puck, you can usually count to three if you're lucky and you're popping on with the goal announcement unless there's a discrepancy about it. And it's, it's phenomenal how quick you guys do it. Yeah, well, uh, I'm, uh, I'm down the row from uh, the off-place officials now for this season, so or at least the beginning. So I have no idea how I'm going to communicate with them for goals and assists. And the ref, I have no idea. So I guess they'll put somebody on a headset with me. Yeah, there's a lot more uh, information. A lot more I, headset. I don't know. I wear one anyway, but um, I don't know. Maybe they'll put another channel on there. Here's we'll the figure it out. Figure it out on the tenth when we do that game. Lou, here's the other burning question I have for you because I also have done some uh, hockey play-by-play in the past as well. 
And when I was doing it, I was pretty far off from the ice. Now, normally you're right there on the ice. How cold is it? Because I know I wasn't even close to the ice <laughs> and I was freezing. So I can't imagine, you know, and it's different when you're playing or you're the referee because you're moving around and you're sweating and you're, you're playing. But isn't it freezing down there? Well, uh, I think that many of us will get used to it. Uh, some guys will wear sweaters underneath their jackets. That's me. Uh, I, I've never done that. Um, and uh, the NHL guys have NHL sweaters, NHL jackets, and all that jazz, uh, and ties and all that. So, I mean, I, I just don't worry about it. I'm, I'm used to it at this point. There are days when it gets pretty cold. When they open the doors in the back to, to, to load something in or out, you know, those big doors? Right. It's really cold, really quick in the winter. So uh, we know when the doors are open. You know, if a show's coming in or something and they're, they're bringing in a show, during a hockey game, it's going to happen the next day. We know they're loading. <laughs> right, and, and you so. being and you being into in the penalty box and with the glass, you were doing the plexiglass pre-COVID before COVID was even here. So, you, so and the NHL has had a, has kind of had a step up on on all this COVID stuff because you're you are surrounded in the in the box basically, right? Yeah, we basically uh, uh, except you know the penalty box is surrounded. They initially when uh, they did the. Uh, the center, they even had uh, glass in between us and the penalties, the penalty box sides. And I had that taken out because of communication. We couldn't, we couldn't communicate with the people, and it didn't work. But, um, you know, so I could talk to players and I could talk to other people uh, on a normal basis. But there was a time when uh, I worked without glass, period. Had no glass in front of me whatsoever. So uh, that's when you had to really pay attention. You still got hit once in a while. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, and I, I know you tell um, the story about the Soviets, um, especially in your book, you tell those stories, and those are without the glass, correct? Yep, and sure are, yeah. Yeah, you said you can get hit, you really got to pay attention, and even now you still got to you know, really pay attention, but the game is also picked up pace. I know I've talked to you about it before, where, you know, it used to be a little bit of a slower pace, and now these guys, they're moving so quick. You put your head down for two seconds to, you know, look at your notes in front of you, and they could have scored a goal. Yeah, well, I do have a monitor, and the replays are there, but usually by the time they're showing a replay, I already know who scored and who has the assist and the time, so I'm getting ready to put it out. So, uh, you know, it uh, it works for us, you know. It works and for it. And, Lou, you have such a cool, in my opinion, perspective because you've been doing it for so long. Do you ever think to yourself you wish hockey was the way it was when you were calling the, the Soviet game, or do you kind of just adapt to this is the way it is now and that's the way it was before? Or do you kind of have that nostalgic feel like, man, I wish, it kinda, I wish I could do games again like I did in the 70s or 80s? Yes and yes. Okay. Uh, I do wish we still played uh, the same kind of hockey, as rough as it was. Uh, and yes, it has adapted, and I've adapted. So uh, there's not much you can do, uh, Phil. When when uh, uh, the league changes the way they call penalties, and you know, if you just put your stick in somebody's midsection, you don't have to uh, yank it. You know, hooking is different now. The penalties are different now, and the players have adapted. So uh, we've adapted. You know, the off ice officials have adapted, uh, and the on ice officials have adapted, and they've driven it. So uh, we just do what we're going to do. And, you know, things have changed around there over the years, too, since, you know, the Spectrum, now the Wells Fargo Center. Because I remember being little and going to a couple of games over there at the Spectrum. And it wasn't as interactive as it is now. They really do a lot of fan engagement. You guys um, do the mites on ice, and then you engage the crowd with different things, the T-shirt cannon and all of that stuff. And it seems like... You know, it's just getting the fans involved and it entices the crowd, makes them louder. And, you know, they do the Pico power play with you. And that used to be about it, you know, for fan interaction. They, you know, go nuts when they score and boo a call. But now you guys, you know, you do little games and contests in between and it's a lot of fun. You know, they make it into a whole production where it wasn't necessarily that way before, was it? Well, no, because the board, the board has driven that, um, Back in the spectrum, uh, there was a, a dot matrix scoreboard. I mean, you know, we didn't have it. Uh, 
you move to this new building, which is now 25 years, I think. I don't know for sure. But you move to this new building, they put in a new scoreboard, and they've had two more since then. The board can do a lot more. And they'll use that board for just about anything they can from a revenue point of view. Uh, you need to do that because uh, the TV contracts uh, aren't like the NBA and uh, the National Football League and so forth. So, and, and, and you know, the, there's been big change in the salary cap uh, and what guys make. So, you know, a minimum is about 800 grand. I mean, you know, that would be pretty good. I'd handle that. Yeah. That. <laughs> and I know. So, I mean, you know, that's, and some guys are making 8 million. So uh, where does it come from? Uh, it's got, it comes from uh, advertising and different things of that nature. And there are signs on just about everything you, you could find, all the stairs behind me, you know. It, it's funny when you're right, watching you on it. TV. You, you have no choice. Yeah, it's funny when you watch on TV, too. Um, I know my brother and I were making fun of it the one day. Uh, he didn't realize that they were popping gra- uh, graphics up on the ice, and they would be there on TV, and we went to a game not too long after, and he goes, wait, where's that poster at? And I said, yeah. they're, they're popping it up on TV because it's advertisement. And then in yeah. the arena, of course, they have it ar- around the boards, and then they have now – I know you guys used to do um, – the case of tasty cakes um, when they would score. And yep. I know after, you know, the goalie matchup brought to you by Comcast business now, which that wasn't always, you know, something you would have to say, but it's all, my brother had actually asked me about that. And I told him, I said, well, that's an advertisement thing right yeah, there, there that is, they're doing. There is a, a, a script that details everything that gets done uh, from the standpoint of a game presentation. Uh, and, um, uh, it doesn't tell me what to say, but it tells me when to say it and basically what we're going to do. So, uh, you know, a lot of that is, is all scripted out. It has to be to make sure we get it in. Uh, occasionally on, on commercials, uh, we get cheated out of a commercial because if it goes long and then if you're in within the last 30 seconds of a, uh, a period, you can't go to commercial. And the final period, you can't go to commercial after two minutes. So sometimes you only have... Uh, you know, certain amount of commercials, and you're cheated out of one. So you got to squeeze stuff in. And you know, stuff has to happen. One of the coolest things for me, uh, going back and watching the old games, even from the '70s, is the first thing I notice above anything else is I see no advertisements. Right? There's nothing on the ice. There's nothing on the boards. Obviously, there's no digital. And for me, I don't know. There's something cool about that. I mean, I get why it's done today. And today, they literally every time you think there's no way we can get another advertisement in here somewhere. They find a way to get the advertisement in there. But something about just those old school games, just watching just the game um, without like, yeah. you know, without Deets and Watson on the ice and, and, you know, the million other things you see. I mean, it's cool. And obviously you were there for that too, which, you know, it, again, it's a good perspective for you because you're able to yeah. compare and contrast. Been there for everything. Uh, yeah. and, and I'll tell you guys something that you may not know. Uh, the New Jersey Devils uh, put uh, a prudential uh, – name on the side of their helmets. They play at the Prudential Center. Mm-hmm. They were the first team to uh, put an advertisement on their side of their helmets uh, in lieu of their logo. You know how where, where the Flyers logo is on a helmet? Right, yes. And the Devils was there too. Well, the Devils are putting uh, uh, Prudential on there. I'm not sure whether that's, you know, what Prudential it is, but it is Prudential. I've seen it. So that's... They're, the first, they're the first guys to do it. Yeah, and you... means that everybody will probably do it. Yeah, and you are seeing that too. I mean, even with the NBA, you've seen that with I think the Sixers have maybe a stub hub on their jerseys yep. and stuff. Yep. And and you know, uh, it's definitely happening more and more. And like you said, because what really the reality is they're running out of room on the field and on the ice and the digital advertising. So that's just the next. That's really just the next step. Got to pay the bills as long as they don't like put somebody's name on the front of their helmets like they do in the, the junior championships yeah, yeah. Uh, i think they go a little far the european teams but uh that's the rules you get got to abide by the rules gents. that is true the other the other question i had for you is um you've seen a lot of games now when i grew up eric Lindros, john leclerc the legion of doom was the thing that's the really the the guys that got me super invested into the flyers into the nhl um yep. do, you re- do you remember a game or a time or an era where the core states or Wells Fargo or the Spectrum was just electric. 
where it was just like, man, like I've never experienced anything like this. Like this guy or team or line or um, playoff round was just like, it just stands above the rest where you just felt yeah, it. Well, um, there are a couple times uh, when uh, JJ Daniel uh, scored uh, to win a playoff, playoff game. I'm not sure of the year, but I'm asked that question a lot. And I'm not big on years and things of that nature, but mm-hmm. uh, JJ Daniel scored. And uh, we went on to win the game, and it changed everything, and, and it was important for our playoffs. Uh, also, when uh, when uh, we came back after the Russians left the ice and uh, Joe Watson scored a goal right away, that was pretty loud. And when uh, the last – when I said last minute of play in the third period or last minute of play in the period uh, before – in the third period of the Stanley Cup, we were winning one nothing. That was that was a spectrum, and that's the loudest, one of the loudest I've ever heard. And uh, you can add to that uh, when uh, the Spectrum opened or the uh, Wells Fargo Center opened, and uh, the first game was Canada against the U.S. Uh, in uh, well, I forget what the series was called, but it was an international series. We had U.S. and Canada, and U.S. beat them in our building. Uh, and that was huge, huge. Yeah, I, so, uh, I love that stuff, like U.S. versus Canada or like the Soviets. To me, that's such like such badass, just, you know, just, you know. International hockey. Yeah, yeah, it's just, there's something about it because I think it's just the pride of, you know, the U.S. and then country versus country. And I think it just amps you up even before you even get there. And then when you get there and you kind of mix it all together, I don't know. I think there's just something so cool about it that it, it's really hard to create any other way. Yeah, I, I think that um, also you need to take into account uh, with that question you asked about the crowds. Uh, the spectrum itself, uh, you could take the length of the spectrum and sit it inside the width of the Wells Fargo Center. Mm-hmm. So what you have there is you have uh, the pitch is different. The spectrum had a different pitch, so you know you didn't have to stand up all the time. Uh, a lot of people stand up and, you know, they don't really need to. And and it's wide and it absorbs the sound a lot different. So when when this, when the new building here, a new building, 25-year-old building, which has been renovated, by the way, well, a lot of that's different. Uh, when that goes, goes crazy, you think about the old days at the Spectrum and it'd be double loud. I mean, just because of the size of the internal area of the building and square footage right right exactly or cubic feet or some damn thing i don't know yeah (laughs) so lou you know you're always so professional down there and you know i'm just wondering has there ever been a time where you've gotten so excited or so frustrated with our fly guys that maybe you've shown anything i mean i know you're usually 100 percent professional down there has there ever been a time uh, it was, uh, yeah, uh, I guess it would have been, uh, I don't know what the date was, but, uh, we were being knocked out of the playoffs a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago. And, uh, uh, we were, we were losing by two, three goals. And, uh, it was when we gave out, uh, the, the bracelets. I remember this. And, uh, it was beautiful. I mean, it was just beautiful. Uh, when they kept them on, when when a couple fans threw them on the ice and there were maybe 100, 150, 200 of them, uh, the ref came over to me and um, he said, Lou, you know, we can't have this. If they throw them anymore after we swept them off, you know, you're going to get a penalty. So I told the fans, I said, you know, just heard from the referee that, you know, if you do this again, we're going to get a penalty. So somebody ran one of our guys, Belmar, here at Edward Belmar, behind the net. Somebody ran him, and they gave uh, – or maybe he ran a guy, and they gave him the penalty. Frustration. And here comes the things. So he comes over to me, and he says, okay, I told you. And I said, well, I told them, Paul, Paul, Paul Dvorsky. I said, I told them. And he says, okay, you got a two-minute minor for delay of the game. So I turned my mic on and I said, okay, you did it. You did it. I remember that. Got an extra two minutes against for not listening to me. And, you know, I, I basically berated them. 
Yeah. You, you know, had every right to. Philadelphia. And uh, that went a little farther. Uh, it went on national news. You got a t shirt. Today's show. Yeah. And uh, I basically, you know, uh, somebody said that uh, I was like a petulant school teacher. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. Class. I remember I, that. I can't agree with them, but they called me Friday before the final game. Uh, against Washington, I think it was Washington, and they said, "Listen, I was—I remember because I was in the Acme getting some groceries, and they said we're going to do something different. We're putting your face, your picture on a T-shirt." Now, first time that happened, yeah. I said, no, "No, come on!" And they did it, and uh, they gave them out, and uh, you know, I signed a lot of them, but um, so that was that was the time. If it was any time that I was like that, that was the only time. Well, and you had every right to do, do so. Every right to do so because you you know if Lou says something like that at a game, something's going on. True. It, it's not a typical. Man, I still should I, not have done that, but that's the way it is. I, I think I you were in the I'm right. I'm sorry I did it. <laughs> uh, I don't think you need to be sorry. I think you had every right to do that, and someone had to say it. I was actually, I was actually at that game. And when people were doing that, I was like, I, I would never do this. But I'm like, man, I, I kind of want to keep this for myself as like a, you know, like a keepsake. I don't know why you're throwing it on yeah. the ice. But that, I don't know either. But that was that was my mindset at least. I was like, man, just throw them, throw them at me. I'll take them, and then Lou well, doesn't have to get mad at you. They weren't. They weren't. You know, uh, I don't know how to say it, but our regular fans are people that think like you, or not the people that threw them. Um, exactly. Uh, so, uh, and there weren't. You know, there were a couple hundred of them. Big deal. But. Uh, it did hold up the game, and I think a lot of that uh, came about because of back in the day, uh, they were throwing a lot of rats on the ice down in Florida, mm-hmm. and uh, they didn't know what to do to solve that problem because people were, vendors were outside selling rubber rats. I mean, you know, take advantage of that. People would bring them in in their pocket and throw them on the ice when the time came, which was in the warm-ups. Like, yeah, I don't know when it was. I don't know. At the beginning of the game. But, um, you know, you, you recall that happening? No, I don't remember that. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're too young. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember that. It might have. I mean, I've I've heard about it. I haven't, but I wasn't. You know, it wasn't in my. Uh, it wasn't in my radar. I don't think. Yep. Yeah, you were probably doing a baseball game somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's probably, that's probably what it was. So that kind of leads me to my last question, at least that I have for you. I'm not sure about JJ. Yep. Is that uh, people ask me all the time too? They always say. Uh, you know, how do you get in the broadcasting? How do you get into radio? I want to be the PA announcer. I I have a great voice. People people say I'm I'm terrific. I can talk. Just keep talking and never stop. Um, so I'm sure people ask you the same thing. You know, how do you get into PA announcing? Uh, is it full time for you? Can you make enough money? Because I'll be honest, I know doing baseball play by play, at least for the Blue Claws, is not enough money to do it uh, full time. No. So. No. You know, like, what's your advice for people that ask you? Because they ask me, and I tell them, listen, I do it, and I, and I don't really have any good advice for you. There is no path to, you know, do this and step two and three and four and five, and then you're going to be able to do it. So, you know, what do you tell people when they ask you? I think what you tell people is probably one of the best things, but you can actually show them because, you know, what you're doing there is you're doing the job for a uh, – single A or double A, I don't know what they are these days, they made that change, team, and that's the way you got to do it. You got to start somewhere and be willing either to relocate, but the job doesn't pay enough to relocate. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, if you want to be play-by-play, that's something different. You know, you start out in the minor leagues and you work your way up and you get a break somewhere along the line. Uh, I did did my stuff in the press box when I was PR, so, you know... uh, and I, I, I repeated the goals and assists from the announcers downstairs. I'm not the first and only one. And, uh, you know, I took over a year before the first cup, and I'm still there, uh, knock on wood. And, uh, you know, but it's not enough to make a real living. I mean, let's face the facts. Uh, and um, it's uh, – I don't know how you'd get in it. You, you know, you you do it. You go uh, for, uh, for a minor league team, and you, you work at it, and if a job comes up, not too far from you keeping your regular job then you do it yeah that's uh, i think that's about it yeah that's what i say too i mean there there really is no secret formula it's basically just ambition and patience and then if you're lucky enough to you know to me i always feel like regardless of what level you do it at uh you know 
to me, and you know, there's always a little bit of ego involved. I know if I'm talking to stadium and your voice is just, um, you know, making its way around the whole place, there is something cool about that, that, sure. you, you know, it's hard to recreate really in any other way. Sure. It is. I mean, you know, you're, you're the only one doing it. Uh, nobody else is doing it. You know, in my, in my case, it's like 31 teams. So there are 31 of us. And I think I'm the Dean at this point. Um, uh, you know, so uh, I've, a lot of good things have happened to me. I've done the Olympics, you know, I've done the outdoor games. Uh, I've done a little couple games in the NBA. I did soccer. Uh, you know, I've, I've done basically, you know, everything there is to do. In and the I... World Football League back in the day when they were around. So uh, I've done a lot of things, but they're all filled up, you based, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I do have uh, one that I wanted to ask you. You know, what's your favorite Thing that you've had to say over the years it can be present your favorite thing um when you're at the flyers game to say or do okay so what's my favorite of all time you're saying yep uh when i called uh mcleish's goal uh in the uh sixth game on may 19th 1974 sounds like a lot of fun and that was a biggie hopefully you got many more years doing this because i know you know you were ill before covid you know just before and they had somebody fill in for you and i remember getting a text from family and friends going who the heck is in for lou because it's not the same and i'm just (laughs) hoping you know you're not ready yet right well as long as i can uh, get there and do a good job i'll I'll continue to try to do it that doesn't mean that uh they're not going to call me in one day and say we're going to make a change you know, I, mean, I don't know, you know. And it's, re- it's really hard to, uh, you know, be the follow-up to you, just because no matter who it is, it could be like Jesus himself, and they'd be like, ah, he's all right, it's not Lou, though. It's you know, true. So. Yeah, but they, don't come, they don't come to the game because of me. They come to the game because of the hockey team, so it won't make that much difference. I remember that when the Zinc uh, left the Sixers, you know, everybody said, oh, you should go do that, you should go do that, you know. I said... No, it's not a good idea to follow the zinc. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 definitely tough. But uh, Lou, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. Uh, okay, you're very welcome, guys. And uh, you, I answered all the questions, right? You're okay. Absolutely, Lou. I really appreciate you coming on. Sure, JJ uh, and Phil, you guys take care, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Sounds Lou. good. You too. Bye bye. Take all care, right, Lou. Bye. All right, well, there he was, our friend, Mr. Lou Nolan, Philadelphia Flyers, PA announcer. All right, JJ, so the Flyers' first game against is the Penguins, right? Yeah, I believe so, the Penguins, which is always a great rivalry. It is, which will be, is it January 13th? Yes, the 13th, I want to say 6.30. Okay, and that would be, and that's at the Wells Fargo Center in Philly. Yes. No fans. It's going to be – now, Gritty's there. I heard Gritty is oh, allowed. Oh, are they allowing Gritty in? Gritty is allowed in. But I think he lives there, so that's kind of like his residence type of thing. Yeah, because I, I heard for a while that – wasn't it the mascots weren't uh, – no, no, this is another thing, right, that just blows my mind, is that you can play hockey, right? There's no fans, okay. But they're not allowing the mascots in. But if but if there's no people in the stands – um. Yeah, let's just put some so cardboard what, cutouts. What, the coronavirus vibrates off, their, off Gritty's fur – yeah. Off his belly button whistle, and then what it's happens? Electric. It, like it just doesn't make any sense. No, it do, it doesn't make any sense. But you know what? It's but he's it, in. He's in, which is I guess all that matters right now, since we can't be there as fans. And of course, you know, as we just talked to Lou, mm-hmm. Lou will be there. I don't know about the other in arena team, but I have a feeling that they're going to do it again. If I had to take a guess, you mean fans? Not the fans. I think they're going to do the in arena or the in home ice experience, whatever okay. it was, where they bring, you know, Lou is on with all the announcements. They pop it on. You just stream it on YouTube, and um, Andrea and Mr. Hollywood. You know, they're always they pop up on the screen. They do their interactive stuff. I'll be honest. It's cool. It's better than nothing. But eh, I'm just kind of like eh about it. Like, I you mean, I, I mean, I'll take it. But my question is, do you think we'll have fans in the stands at some point this year? Um, Or do you think it's going to have to wait another whole season? To be honest with you, the way that people are talking about the incoming president, 
I'm going to say that it's it's going to be a while before we see fans in the stands. That's why I'm laughing. I'm seeing, you know, all these concert dates coming up. But Mike, but but here's the other thing. Here's the question I have. If if we're doing the masking, right? And people are social distancing. And again, we can go we talked about this like I feel like 9,000 times. We can go in the stores, we can go to Walmart, we're at ShopRite, we're we're, you know, in restaurants. Why can't they just social distance and wear a mask at the stadium? I don't know. COVID must be like 10 times stronger in there. I I, I don't agree with it. I mean, hockey, you know that. I don't agree with it. Right. I mean, I get it. Like hockey's inside, so we have that versus like baseball or football that's outside. But, you know, I mean, not to let in anybody. Personally, I, I it, it pisses me off that I can't be there. My father has season tickets, and he's still paying for these season tickets. And it's, well, I'm that, not blaming the well, that's NHL. Outrageous. I'm not blaming the NHL or the Flyers or anything like that because it's not their fault. So if, they want the fans in the stadium, right? I obviously. know that it's Philly, right? You well, know, so any place that has a team as a business it wants people there, obviously. So what, what do they? You pay until they don't play, and then they issue you a refund. I believe what's happening is it's becoming a credit, if I remember correctly. It's a credit. So essentially, once we're allowed in, twenty twenty six, right? Yeah, twenty two. Yeah. <laughs> God, I hope Ten not. years from now, we're going to let you all in. You're going to have a great time. Yeah, I'll inherit those tickets by that point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it's going to work out for you in the long run, my pal. Yeah. COVID, <laughs> my scheme to get Flyers <laughs> tickets. Ha-ha. Yeah, so. It, it's a shame because it's something my family really likes to do. As a, you know, we have made friends with the people in front of us. Where we sit is right by the Zamboni Tunnel. Mm-hmm. And they have the rows of two. So it's two-seaters. And we made friends with the lady in front. And a lot of times we'll send her a message, hey, if you, you know, or she'll send us a message, hey, I'm not going to the game if you want to buy the tickets or whatever. Mm. And then we'll all go as a family. And it's just a great time. We all love it. We enjoy it. I'll go down and I'll see, you know, Lou at at the end of one of the periods go down and say hello, which is a cool experience because, you know, you're talking about things you don't normally get to do. Well, you don't know because. You know, right now, it's still early January. I think, you know, and hockey, since it started late, you're going to have an extra, like, two months on the end here of the season. Thank God. I would I would think, you know, everybody's now getting vaccinated and, you know, whatever. So I, I think maybe once we get to the spring and summer, may, I mean, I would think they would have to let some people in because, you know, now you're, now you're kind of really going on two full seasons of uh, – because you didn't have it all last year, basically. Right. Like – Maybe the beginning of the year. For Maybe a they months. only let the season ticket members in. To now, start, I'm, I'm only saying that because they've already paid. Right. They've already paid for it, and you or know, a limited let them capacity. Get, this limited capacity thing, or right. I mean, maybe you do. There's so much, I guess, that goes into it because I know, you know, like with schools, you have your pods that you're in. You know, this is your family pod, or this is your classroom pod. Right. I, how this shit is nuts it, it really is it's like it's, it's like you have to talk through like these crazy like ideals like all right well if you put like a like if you put like a hazmat suit on and then like for your family members that we could sit there i mean and i get it right like i understand like i don't want anybody to get sick or anything like that but i'm just tr- well, i'm just trying to find trying to mold trying to see the light at the end of the tunnel trying to have some sort of pathway to do something normal well, i mean we've definitely gotten there over the, over the last couple of months, I mean, you could at least go out to eat in a restaurant now. But you can still, work again. We're at 25%. Yeah. So there's still a lot of businesses that can't do anything. And I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here when I say this, but you can't do anything. And it, it really sucks because I'm watching businesses struggle. Or am I going to be open in six months because of this you know situation? It, it's and like it's, it, they're getting no help from the state. Well, we're doing like a, like a small crawl. So, like, we get back to the hockey thing. Uh, you know, last year was canceled. We didn't have any sports, even on TV, for a while. Then it was like, okay, well, we have sports on TV, but the NBA was in a bubble in uh, in Disney World in Orlando, and hockey was in like was it like one or two arenas in Canada, right? And now we've really exploded, and now there's no fans. But now you could play at your home at your home stadiums. And but I believe if I looked correctly at the um, the schedule that they're doing kind of like baseball does, how baseball does a series, okay, and they'll, they'll play. You know, the Mets like two, and the Phillies will pay play two or three games, and then they'll go to the instead of today I'm playing the Mets or you know for, in the case well, of the Flyers today I'm paying I'm playing the Penguins tomorrow I'm playing the Bruins and then I'm gonna play the Islanders. Well, to be honest with you. I actually like that idea better. I've gotten I it kind of grew on me. 
I mean, because it's like playoffs. It is like playoffs, right? And it's like if you just do you know two three games, it's probably easier for the players too because a lot less traveling. Yeah, because that's got to be brutal. Which is like you know one, and I understand they try to do the schedule where it's close. You go to Pittsburgh, and then you, you're playing teams on the East Coast. Then they go to the West Coast. But, but then you get those oddballs too, where you just got done a game in Philly. You got to go to Florida. And by the time you're checked into the hotel, you're flown out there or whatever you or you drive or whatever the hell they do, you know, you're exhausted. And then you that's usually when you play a shitty game. Yeah, it's hard. Like in baseball at least, you know, if you're playing and a lot of times too they'll play two, three series at home, so they'll have like whatever, like a 10, 12 game homestand. And then they'll go out to the West Coast. So that initial trip to get out there might be a little tough. But then once you're there, it's like, all right, we're here for two weeks. We're playing the, the Padres. Then we're playing the Dodgers. That, you know, so at least you're, you have a little bit, I don't know, you, I feel like you have some time to at least kind of get accustomed to the, either the time change where, you know, hockey's like uh, basketball's the same way. Where you're just like banging all over the place in the U.S. where yeah. you might beat a, you know, three, four different states in a week. Right. And well, you know what? I think they really do need to, not just for the businesses, but the death toll is still at 1%. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't know the numbers as far as, you know, um, what normal before COVID, pre COVID, what the death rate was. But I'm going to imagine if it wasn't 1%, it was a little bit under that. You know, so many people mm-hmm. die every day, so many people are born every day. You're, you, we've been sitting at this 1% death toll this entire situation. Yeah, I still think the biggest thing is that they just honestly don't know that, like, the true statistics. They don't it's know. It's probably not even 1%. Yeah, they, I mean, the thing is they don't know the, the long-term effects, and, and, I, and I think that's really the biggest issue. They don't. Right. Re- but yet you have these assholes out there ready to get their arms stuck. Yeah. With who knows what. I think, you know, even for that, like, again, people you know, are on different sides. And I think, you know, they the people that are out trying to get it just feel like, let me get this so we can get back to normal. And I just hope whether you get the vaccine, you don't get the vaccine, you know, whatever, that at some point it, it taught us, to me, one thing that you only get to live once. You know, YOLO. Enjoy, enjoy your time. You know, have fun. Be positive. Be, uh, you know, uplift other people. Help other people. You know, do what you need to do. DJ. DJ DJ is the coolest thing you could ever do in your life. I mean, we're professional DJs. Hey. And the reason we're professionals is because people have paid us their money to DJ for them. You know, the only thing that I can say is looking up, though, is that I did just book a wedding. And that kind of, it gave me a little bit of hope. A little bit. Like that we're going to end up. Yeah, you I mean, know, you're getting back to it normal. Is, it is. There's there's a light at the end of the tunnel. The positivity's here. NHL Flyers hockey starts January 13th. Just don't against mess the Penguins. With, don't mess with my Flyers. JJ just doesn't know the time because he didn't research before we started. Hey, listen, anything goes. That is true. I'll post it on our Facebook page. All right, can you hit me with the um, the socials? Yeah, and anything goes. PJ, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Another. Awesome episode, JJ, is in the books. Thanks to our friend Lou Nolan for stopping by. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace. Bye. This is Anything Goes with Phil Rossi and JJ Golick.